This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. A Palestinian-American teacher in Austin, Texas, has filed a federal lawsuit for losing her job as a speech pathologist after refusing to sign a pro-Israel oath. Bahia Mawi is an Arabic-speaking child language specialist who had worked for nine years in the Pflugerville Independent School District. But she lost her job last year after she declined to sign a pledge that she, quote, will not boycott Israel during the term of the contract, unquote, and that she will not take any action that is, quote, intended to penalize, inflict economic harm on or limit commercial relations with Israel. Before filing the lawsuit Monday, Bahia Amawe spoke to The Intercept about what happened to her. The point of boycotting any products uh, that supports Israel is to put pressure on the Israeli government to change its treatment, the inhumane treatment of the Palestinian people. Having grown up as a Palestinian, I know firsthand the oppression and the struggle that Palestinians face on a daily basis. You know, I have to set an example for my kids. We got to stand up for what's the justice and for right and equal opportunity for everybody and, um, and humane conditions. And so for me, it was an easy decision in that aspect. Um, you know, I, I, so I, ha I could not sign it. I was forced to depart from my job uh, because I will not sign it and I cannot return back um, if I don't sign it. I have been here in the States for over 30 years. I'm an American citizen. I, I follow the law. And so I, I have the luxury of having these rights, which many people in other countries do not have. It infringes on all my principles. And on top of that, my right to speech and also right to protest. It's baffling that they can throw this down our throats, you know, and decide to protect another country's economy versus protect our constitutional rights. Last year, Texas became one of 26 states with laws preventing state agencies from contracting with companies or individuals aligned with the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement. BDS is an international campaign to pressure Israel to comply with international law and respect Palestinian rights. However, its opponents say BDS is a thinly disguised anti-Semitic attempt to debilitate or even destroy Israel. Democracy Now! reached out to the Pflugerville Independent School District in Texas, which responded with a statement saying it had, quote, followed state law which does not allow school districts to hire a contractor unless the contract contains a written verification that the contractor does not boycott Israel and will not boycott Israel during the term of the contract. The plaintiff did not agree to the contract as written. Therefore, it was unable to be executed in accordance with Texas law." Unquote. Well, for more, we go to Austin, Texas, where we're joined by Bahia Amawi. In Chicago, her attorney, Gadir Abbas, is with us, a senior litigation attorney with CARE, the Council on American Islam. Relations. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Um, let's begin with Bahia. Explain exactly what happened and how you notice what was in this contract. I mean, you've been teaching in the school district. This is a public school, is that right? For how long? Yes. Um, this is a public school, and I have been contracting with them for around nine years. Um, and every year I get a contract that's exactly a duplicate of the year before. And this year I got it as well. The contract at the initial start of my in month, which is August, when school begins. And so I signed the initial contract. Um, it was exactly the same as I sign every year. But then later on, a few weeks later, my speech coordinator um, contacted me and says, well, over here, we have additional papers this year. This is brand new, and we need people to sign it. So when she, I mean, I received the papers, I looked through it. There was a about maybe a stack of four sheets of paper with a bunch of new compliances and new codes. Um, they appear to be normal job-related um, issues like background history, um, criminal history, um, you know, equal opportunity of employment, until I came across um, the one that has nothing to do with my job, which is um, Code 2270.01 of the Texas Government Code. And, and that one, I was reading it, and it states that currently the, the contractor must affirm that currently does not or will not boycott Israel and basically, in short, causing any economic harm. So that's when I noticed then, I, I right away, I um, sent an email immediately and I stopped even reading the additional codes. 
And, and I sent an email to my speech coordinator um, telling her, listen, I cannot sign this. This is against my principles, against my constitutional rights. And, and it's also against my moral and ethical values, considering that I am a Palestinian American. And I have family that actually live in occupied territory, so it affects me personally as well. So it affects me in both ways as an American citizen and as a Palestinian American, too. She was kind enough. We have a really good relationship with her. And I've known, like I said, I've known everybody for nine years, so I have a really good relationship with everybody at the school district. And she tried, she said, let me, let me see if I can go around it. After two weeks, um, she returned back to me and apologized and said, I'm really sorry, Bahia, but they said they will not pay you if you do not sign this part of the, um, the new compliances. And so I kind of had to, uh, you know, forcefully leave at that point and couldn't, couldn't return. And, and uh, Bahia Maui, now, were you aware that this law had been passed uh, in, in Texas at all? Had you heard anything in the, in the media about it? And, uh, and why did you decide then that you uh, needed to uh, 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 seek an attorney's help uh, in challenging this? Mm -hmm. I did not. I was not aware that this law was passed. Um, I've heard of it in other states, but I did not know it was passed in Texas. It, it was kind of went under, <laughs> you know, undetected, I think. It wasn't something they advertised or talked about much in the media. Um, and I'm not a social media person, so I'm not always online. Um, I have four kids, so I'm very busy with them. So I'm not, uh, I don't go on Facebook or look up things or anything. So I really had no aware of this, of, of this um, new law being passed. Um, and when I saw it, I, I, it just was unfair in so many ways. It just, um, it was, and it just did not make sense. It was uh, baffling to me and shocking that my position as a speech therapist, helping kids, you know, with their speech and, you know, develop com with their communication in the elementary school affects any economic harm in Israel. So to me, it's just nothing made sense at all of this. And it was a violation of everything, violation of my first, my uh, freedom of speech, um, right to protest, my constitutional right. And so it was actually a no-brainer. I, I knew that I had to do something about it. And I didn't want this to grow into something more, which I, it can possibly, it, you know, and affect, you know, everybody, including my kids when they go to the universities. Who knows if they ask us, you know, in a state university, if they have to sign it before registering for classes. You know, it may grow into something more. And I knew I had to do something about it. I want to look a little more closely at the language contained in the contract. It asks our guest, Bahia Maui, to sign a pledge that she does not currently boycott Israel and that she will, quote, not boycott Israel during the term of the contract. The contract goes on to explain, boycott Israel means refusing to deal with, terminating business activities with, or otherwise taking any action that's intended to penalize, inflict economic harm on, or limit commercial relations specifically with Israel or with a person or entity doing business in Israel or in an Israeli-controlled territory, but does not include an action made for ordinary business purposes. So, um, let me bring Bring um, your lawyer into this conversation, Ghadir Abbas. Um, this is one of 26 states that have passed similar laws. In this case, if, um, if Bahia was to simply say um, uh, to a friend, uh, I am not going to buy something um, that is made in the occupied territories um, that Israel um, is selling in the United States. This would make her in violation of the law? Yeah. Uh, Bahia would be disqualified from uh, working for any school district in the state that's following this law simply because she chooses not to buy, for instance, Sabra hummus. So her grocery store decision to not buy Sabra hummus and to buy uh, instead another kind of hummus automatically under this law disqualifies her from all public employees, uh, uh, all public employment of all kinds. And here, Bahia is engaged in core protected activity that really has a hallowed uh, place in American tradition, from boycotts against British tea, from the Montgomery boycott, from, um, from the uh, boycott against apartheid South Africa. 
uh, Bahia's a uh, actions and choices to spend her money in a particular way are expressive conduct that are protected by the First Amendment. And here, the, the Texas, the state of Texas, is siding with a foreign country's policy preferences over the, um, uh, the needs of Bahia's students. And let's remember, here in the final analysis, Bahia's students are being deprived of their speech pathologist in, uh, in exchange for um, uh, uh, accommodating the policy preferences of foreign country. That's illegal and objectionable. Now, Gadir Abbas, given that there are 26 states that now have uh, uh, similar laws in place, this uh, and uh, uh, legislation that has gotten very little, uh, if, if any, national attention, it must indicate that there is an intensive lobbying effort going on at the state level, uh, and uh, uh, either uh, by the state of Israel or by lobbying groups employed uh, by groups in defense of the state of Israel. Do you know anything about this lobbying campaign that's been going on? Well, it's extremely successful. I um, mean, Texas, for example, it passed uh, um, the legislature almost unanimously um, on a bipartisan basis. Um, and, yeah, these bills have passed with relatively little controversy, and it's only escalated Congress right now. Um, it's Ben Cardin, a Democrat, um, who is pushing to include a uh, criminal version of this state law um, and the continuing resolution that is set to expire on Friday. And so we might have, by the end of this week, a federal law that criminalizes um, uh, the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement and the activity associated with it. And here it just goes to show that for some issues, um, and Israel and Palestine are one of them, uh, that the, uh, the, the pro-Palestinian voices, the folks that are advocating for um, Palestinians to have equal rights, don't have uh, necessarily an ally in the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, and really must look to the activists and the movement for Palestinian rights itself to vindicate these basic rights to speak out in favor of um, uh, Palestinian rights. I'd like to turn to Texas Governor Greg Abbott speaking about the anti-BDS legislation um, last year in May. Israel is one of Texas's largest trading partners. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there is the issue of, about the essential international ally that Israel plays for both the United States and the state of Texas. As a result, any anti-Israel policy is an anti-Texas policy. Any boycott of Israel is considered to be un-Texan. And Texas is not going to do business with any company that boycotts Israel. So that's that's Texas Governor Greg Abbott um, speaking about the legislation a year ago. Um, Bahia Maui, are you an active member of the Boycott Divest Sanctions movement? I am not actually an active member of the BDS at all. Um, just um, personally for myself, if I'm aware of a product that is, um, you know, supports Israel or is made in, in the country, then I just have a personal—I make a personal choice to avoid it, because I don't want to support their ongoing occupation and aggression and then subhuman treatment of the Palestinians. That's making me kind of like a silent participant, complicit with the whole um, occupation. So I actually—I'm not aware of it. I even go through and find out the list of things. I've, I just— I'm, I just happen to know about it, or, um, you know, if somehow I find out, then I just avoid it. But other than that, really, I'm not an active member. And uh, what's been the reaction of your fellow uh, in employees uh, uh, at, the, uh, uh, at the school or, uh, or other teachers as well to, the, to uh, this, uh, uh, the results of what's happened to you in this case? Yeah, well, um, so when I had to um, forcefully leave, um, I notified my coworkers, my co-evaluators that I work on an early childhood team, which um, are the ones that I'm usually in association with, um, and they depend on me to do the Arabic um, evaluations. 
Um, so the, when I told them, they were kind of shocked because after nine years, they were like, you know, why? What's happening? What, what's changed all of a sudden? So that's when I shared with them this new compliance. And they were just disturbed as much as I was and appalled. And they supported me. And they say, you know, we understand and we hope you do, you know, pursue and do something about it. So they were very encouraging and very supportive. And they were hoping that I can return eventually, which is my, which is my goal. I want to be able to go back. Um, to work again, because there's a need for a speech therapist who speaks Arabic to, um, you know, to evaluate students who have Arabic as a second language. It is actually um, uh, be beneficial to be a speech therapist with another language, bilingual in another language. It's such a need yeah, all over. Um, Gadir Abbas, is there any reference to any other state, um, any other country in uh, this kind of um, contract that you have to sign, a kind of oath to another country? No, there, there's no other um, uh, country that's mentioned in the state of Texas law. There's no other country mentioned in any of these laws in the more than 25 states that have passed them or the executive orders that have been issued by governors. Um, this is only about Israel, and it really is um, unique in American history to have a, a law that specifically um, uh, prevents um, Americans from boycotting a particular foreign country. I've never seen um, any kind of historical analog to what we're seeing here. And the, the fact of the matter, though, is that free speech rights in the United States are very well protected. And boycott activity, Supreme Court and other courts have held over and over again, is a core expressive um, action that Bahia and others are um, welcome and uh, entitled to take. And so whatever the state of Texas um, and the governor of Texas uh, believes, and uh, it's uh, obviously um, he's um, uh, cast his lot with Israel rather than uh, uh, Texas uh, citizens like Bahia, who are put in the position of losing their job or um, uh, advocating for their beliefs. Um, the Constitution is uh, designed and the Bill of Rights exists to protect Bahia's right to um, protest the policies of Israel and in the occupied territories as she sees fit. Gadir Abbas, I want to thank you for being with us, senior litigation attorney with CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, representing Bahia Amawi and her lawsuit against the Pflugerville Independent School District and the state of Texas. When we come back, we'll be joined by the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Glenn Greenwald, who wrote about Bahia's case in The Intercept. And we'll talk about um, these laws around the country and what is the legal record when they're challenged in places like Ohio. Kansas and Arizona. Um, are these laws struck down? Stay with us.